thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Uh, just by show of hands, anyone using Kafka at the moment, or is this just yes? Okay, most most people about about like sixty percent. Okay, so uh, I'm a field engineer at Neo4j. My name's Alex, and uh, in a prior life, um, I worked at Confluent, and I always thought these two um, data access patterns were super interesting, even on their own. But when you put them together, I think you can do some really like compelling things uh, by combining um, streams and graph. Um, so that's why I'm here. So when I, when I was at Confluent, I'd always show people, uh, I'd use like the Connect ecosystem and show them Neo4j at the end and they'd be like, oh, that thing's really cool. So that's how I ended up uh, here because they seem more interested in the graph than the stream. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I think most of you kind of know where Kafka came from, but I'm going to just give a really high level quick view. So the CEO of, of Confluent, when he's at LinkedIn, he, he had this data integration issue where he had loads of things needing to talk to loads of other things, and it was such a mess. It was so hard to maintain all of these point-to-point -point connections. And then one day, he's thinking about logs. Um, that's why his book is called I Love Logs. Um, he, he, he thought, well, if I just write down all of these things in a, in a log, then I can have other people read that log, uh, and uh, that's going to be a lot easier to maintain than all of these point-to-point -point connections. So um, this is messaging reimagined, right? Instead of having individual queues for each um, you know, subscriber, um, there's like one log, and uh, lots of people reading. So it's a really kind of clean integration. Um, so anyway, that's where it came from. I was trying to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. You, question's fine. Wouldn't that make it as a SQL portfolio as opposed to doing No, no. <laughs> so it's distributed. Yeah, so the log, no, no, you can ask questions. So the log is replicated and it's distributed over uh, multiple machines. Um, there's all sorts of, there's, there's things you can tune for in Kafka. So sometimes you might want to fire and forget. You care only about throughput, so you can tune for that. If it's something that's very, very precious to your business, maybe you can say it needs to be replicated to all the nodes before you get an acknowledgement. So it's, uh, tunable and it's fault tolerant and resilient and performant and all the illities. It has them all. You just need to tune it for whatever your use case is. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So um, there are two ways. So, so this is the first one. The Neo4j streams is the first um, way of getting data in and out uh, from Neo4j to Kafka and back again, right? So, so this runs as a plugin in Neo4j. For those who you probably already know this, but there's a plugins folder, and these are things that you can you can drop a Java class in here, and you can extend the functionality of Neo4j um, by plugins. So there's a streams plugin. It uses the producer and consumer API to talk to Kafka. And um, this, there's things I love about this and things I don't love about it. So things I love about this is uh, it hangs off the transaction handler. In Neo4j, there, when um, uh, uh, something is, a uh, transaction is committed to the database, there's a transaction event that happens, and there's a hook. Uh, and this um, listens to that hook and um, asynchronously sends all those messages to Kafka. That's so neat. And, and that, this is like proper CDC. It's really fast. Um, and uh, so, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, look, CDC information. It has, like, I don't know if you've come across Debezium. Debezium is, um, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's a CDC that they have, like, MySQL, Post. I'm going to show you some, actually, later, some, some Debezium. There's loads of things where you can capture changes from database right into Kafka, and it does that. So you get the payload with the before and after, and so that's, that's beautiful. And, and you can play those back on another instance. So this is a way you can have like two Neo4j instances and keep them in sync with one another uh, via Kafka. So that's really cool. Um, and it just is a little jar file. You just put your little jar file in your plugins folder, and then you get this functionality. So you don't need to maintain this whole 
cluster of machines or Docker containers or whatever. So that's kind of neat. Um, and you can, it's supposing you have a transaction and you're looking for some kind of pattern in the data, there's streams.publish and streams.consume. So you can write back from the O4J directly, um, which might be really handy. Imagine you're looking for a fraud use case and then you know something matches the criteria immediately. That can be published to a message queue and then you can have some kind of downstream process that like, goes and you know stops the transaction or you know calls the police or whatever um, so that's really cool but the downsides uh, what I don't love well one of them is just being deprecated sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes and uh, uh, don't quote me on this uh, but sometimes things don't get deprecated when they say they're being deprecated so if you go to the docs it says it's being deprecated that's last I heard um, you know, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And this is something that um, I wish it, it's fine. There's a, a, an edge case. There's a perfect storm of like things that can go wrong. Um, so if your Kafka goes offline and then the messages are in the producer, it's asynchronous. Those messages are sitting in the producer. Kafka goes offline for whatever, shouldn't go offline because it's all fault tolerant, but sometimes can happen. Then imagine what happens to your, your Neo4j goes down. The stuff in the producer buffer is just lost. So that sucks. Um, it's unlikely, highly unlikely. If that means, if it's a life and death thing, uh, then you shouldn't use this, right? Um, but it's probably like very, very unlikely, but it can happen. So I'm just like throwing it out there as like this, this is a potential hazard with this thing. Then everyone's moving to the cloud, right? Like you just see, Every, everyone who offers any kind of technology, you can see more and more you know, cloud dollars versus on-prem dollars, and it doesn't work with Aura, which is our managed cloud service. So that's a, a reason that you might not want to use Neo4j streams. And then this thing, schema registry support. I think that's kind of a big deal. If you use Kafka in a big way, um, you, you, you find that you evolve the formats of messages and you can break downstream things. So what you want to do is separate the, the people who are producing the data from the people who are consuming it. And, and then if you have tight coupling between the formats of the messages, um, that means uh, your development cycles are slowed down. So that's kind of like a, that's a bummer, you know. But let's have a look. Let's see what else we got. On this side, Kafka Connect. You have a cluster to maintain. You don't have that edge case. So all of the um, state is stored in Kafka. Um, so you, you, the, you don't lose, it's not possible to have like power outages and the perfect storm lose any data. Um, this is really the reason, the big honking great reason for using Connect. Um, apart from the fact it, this might not exist. Um, uh, <laughs> These, these connectors, there's, there's about 100 different things you can get Kafka to talk to. I think that's kind of amazing. Uh, and, and so if you're building a solution, you might have a combination of messaging and databases, and you want to mash all those things together. This like, ecosystem of connectors, perfect for that. And it works on Aura, so you don't have to be in the, the Neo4j DBA management business. Um, but, but here's a downside of this thing, long polling. So at the moment, it runs a query uh, that says, hey, can I have, have you got any data since uh, the last time you ran? And then you set an interval and it's like five seconds or one second or something. You're introducing a delay when you are sourcing from Neo4j. So that's like, yeah, yeah I wish it wasn't so, but it is. And you don't, at the moment, you don't get those beautiful CDC messages that you can then play back uh, to another Neo4j instance. So these are like the two ways of getting data, well, in and out of uh, Neo4j uh, with Kafka. Yes? Can I ask a question now or later? You can ask a question now. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, is that proper eventing? Proper eventing. Uh, proper eventing. Imply, imply the Kafka connected is 
So this is long polling. What I mean by the difference between this is long polling, right? So this, th uh, this is something on the transaction handler that's immediately, oh, got once in it, and then, yeah, and th this one is like, uh, hello, have you got anything? Uh, oh, it's a yeah. versus yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. yeah. And, um, Another question. Yeah. And does that mean, you know, uh, the direction is pushing? Yes, the that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. You. Another question. Oh, yeah, I actually had a question about deprecation. Do you know why? Deprecation, why? Um, probably, my, 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 I, I don't know. But I, I have a theory. The cloud is my theory. Everything's moving to the cloud. It's really hard to maintain, like, all the different plugins on a managed service. They, they need to be somewhat standardized. That's my guess, but I don't know. Um, so that's why, I don't know. So, so uh, there are, look, I, I scraped this off of uh, Confluence website, and this is about half of them. They didn't have icons for a lot of these, so I wrote a little script, it got all these, these are all the different things you can get data into Kafka and out of. So if you should stand up that connect cluster, you kind of unlock the uh, possibility to integrate easily with a ton of different things, um, which I think is really cool. Um, so that's really the main reason, right? You get this. Um, so my friend, uh, I said, like I, I was showing this slide to her before, uh, and uh, she said, look, you can only have this slide in here if you put uh, alien ears on it because it's a bit lame. Uh, so so um, you have these connect workers. There's a cluster of these workers, and inside those workers, you have all of these plugins those, all those connectors that you saw on the previous slide, they all have a plugin. The reason that you have like plugins is you um, don't. Everyone has different needs of what they want to connect to, and if you didn't have, if you had every single connector in the instance, it would just be a massive bloated thing. That would be silly. That's why you have plugins. Um, this SMT single message transform. Uh, this is a very lightweight, and I'll show you a little bit. Uh, a light transformation that you may choose to add to your messages, you might want to strip out data. We have this concept in Neo4j of a decorator. A decorator is something that should not belong in the graph. Maybe you want to yank out those things before you send them over the wire, perhaps. I don't know. But you can do all sorts of things. Casting. You know, I have a string that has number one inside quotes, and it's really an integer. You can do those types of things uh, with those SMTs. This scales out, so you have like connector jobs, and they, those are split up into tasks. They can get quite parallel. That's that's like a, a blessing and a curse, really. Like the parallelization. If you um, hammer Neo4j and you don't do it thoughtfully, um, you might end up with locking issues. So that's like a, you know something to keep in mind. You might think, oh, I'll just add a load of partitions and be super parallel, and then and then you then it doesn't go faster. It's actually slower. <laughs> so um, these are things uh, that if you've not set this up before, uh, you should probably know. So there's two modes of running Connect. Um, the f the, there's a standalone mode. That's not fault tolerant. It should run as in highly available. It should, you shouldn't have a single point of failure. Uh, um, so the distributed mode stores everything in Kafka and can scale horizontally. So you should run in distributed mode. Um, sometimes people will take an instance and they'll load it up with loads of tasks and then it just can't keep up. Um, so 20 is kind of like the, the agreed upon magic number of tasks that you can reasonably expect a, uh, a Connect worker to handle. Um, usually, this is really a note to myself, right? So often I find I start like typing something on Stack Overflow or uh, Slack, and then put, someone sends me a link, and I just feel so stupid. So that mostly the answers are already in the documentation, so read the manual. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so for monitoring, this is a thing that most people can spin this stuff up really super quickly, docker run command, off you go. But if you're going to run this in production, you have to take, pay attention to these things. So it's a Java app, JMX, Java Management Extensions. Usually every company has some kind of way of managing Java-based apps, like they might use a new relic or a Datadog or something like that. So, so whatever you're using, tie that into it. Offsets. So Kafka is a um, message, you append messages, and, and if you're running behind, that might be important to know. You might set up some kind of monitoring to say, if I'm falling behind, like the messages are showing up faster than I can write them to Neo4j or whatever, let me know because um, you know, it's better when, you, when Datadog calls the, you than your boss sort of thing. So uh, that's why you should monitor offsets. And there is a restful endpoint in this where you can pull out the state of all of these connectors and say, you know, like, are they all healthy running? Uh, so, so these are things you should tie into. Um, dead letter queues. So if I try and write a message, maybe I get a malformed piece of JSON or something. I'm trying to write that into uh, Neo4j. It can't. It just throws up, says, I, I don't know what you mean. If you write that to a dead letter queue, rather than just dropping it on the ground or, or stopping altogether, those are the three options, right? I like ignore, uh, just carry on, <laughs> just don't care, just carry on. Uh, or uh, like stop, uh, you know, uh, you might want the, the nice middle ground, dead letter queue, uh, where I'm going to take that error message, I'm going to put it in the header of the message, so I haven't um, bastardized my message, it's still like intact, it's still got the same key and the value, it's just got a little message in the, the header that says this is why I was unable to write it, then maybe you can fix something downstream and replay those messages and you haven't lost anything. So dead letter queues, uh, good thing to have. Um, this is kind of a bummer, you know, we talked about the I wish uh, we had proper CDC on the connect. We don't. Um, but if you're, if you're sourcing data from other things, don't use JDBC to continually make requests because that's like not really kind to the database. Uh, so, so don't do that. If, but you have to for Neo4j, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and this is, a, this, like, is a talk in itself. So, when you scale out, you can have loads of tasks writing to Neo4j. Sometimes the, 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 it takes a message and um, it might create a cipher statement that's kind of long and traversing a lot of nodes to make a change to the graph. And then maybe you bounce Neo4j or something and you get these messages building up in uh, the Kafka topic and then Neo4j comes back online and then whoosh, all the parallelization just like hammering it and then it gets locks, locks, oops, sorry. It gets locks um, all throughout and then eventually some of the queries fail. So there are strategies to avoid this. Uh, one of them, it, well, First of all, if you did the query tuning uh, course, I thought that was amazing yesterday. So making sure that your cipher has the lightest touch on the database, think about the modeling, and just like avoid creating a massive amount of locking, add retries, um, the transactions can get large. There's an unwind statement. Kafka gets a batch of records and it will unwind and kind of do a for each. And that's in one transaction. So imagine if your transaction size is like a thousand and then I have some really expensive cipher statement. It's just going to beat the crap out of the database. You don't want to do that. Make the batch size a bit smaller and think about things like checkpointing. Otherwise, you're going to blow up the transaction log. So there's like some sharp edges here, but with care, you can avoid them. So, yeah, I was thinking about this, like people get, uh, people who don't know, uh, everybody comes from a relational database, right? Like, uh, and they're like, oh, a table, that's a label, a row is a node, okay, got it, got it. And then, and then they'll, they'll craft some cipher statement and, and they'll go to Snowflake or something and they'll use Spark and they'll be like, Bleh. and then they'll, they'll think, oh, look, I graphed it. Uh, and so, and, and then that someone will say, but why did we do that? I don't know. I don't know why we did that. It, I just had to get the data from there to there and I did it. Uh, and then, well, what can I do with this now? Well, 
Not very much because you have to always start with the questions. Uh, so this is just, uh, uh, I think it's really important. And this is setting the stage for things you can do when you're ingesting data um, before. So Kafka is not just like the pub something. There's connectors. And there's also Kafka Streams, which enables you to, and KSQL, uh, that allow you to manipulate the data beforehand. So you can be more gentle to your Neo4j by taking some of that processing, doing it outside. So this is kind of like a typical thing that you might see if, I, if I'm like Kafkaing or whatever. These are, the, these are things that um, you, you may have not come across or thought about. You probably know all about connectors, um, but you may have not used Kafka streams, and it's kind of neat. And it gives you all of these um, DSL, domain-specific language, to slice and dice and put windows on data and do filtering and aggregations and joins and do all that, do it outside and have nicely crafted messages. And I'll show you what, an example of something uh, that I did um, using clickstream data. So I thought when I first started working at Neo4j, I was thinking about networks and I thought, well, a network is a graph. And then I just so happen to live in a house with a network switch in it. And that's a rich source of data. That's got to be way cool. So then I put like a packet analyzer and I got a tsunami of data like this and I start throwing it into my graph and then boof, my disk is fill up and, you know, and then I thought, oh yeah, that Kafka streams thing, that's what I should have done. So I wrote a little Kafka streams job that takes a lot of this aggregates these things and, and you, these windows quite handy so you can put those on a relationship and then you can ask questions about how much data was between this host and that host between these times but because I did that in the, the Kafka streams the stateful streaming uh, you know I was kinder to my Neo4j uh, database yeah. so you're doing some processing in the stream itself yeah, Kafka Streams. Yeah, so Kafka, you know. No, I use Kafka. So I want to show you uh, something that's like, yeah. <laughs> I have a little bit of like ADD-ness. So I think, oh, oh, I know the answer to that. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> there's uh, this is the, there's layers of abstraction, right? So it, back in the day, there was just producer consumer. But everyone tried to do those stateful things. And then uh, it was. Um, they thought, look, it don't reinvent the wheel. Let's just build a layer of abstraction on top of it, and then we can use this. So that's what I'm using right here. And then uh, Donovan is using this thing. I don't love this thing as much, so I just <laughs> use that thing. Yeah. So back, where were we? Yeah. Where? yeah. So we're back here. No, we're one, one down from here. OK. Yeah, so windowing, aggregation, uh, do stuff before it hits the graph. Single message transforms, these, these are handy things. We mentioned these a couple of times. So there's all of these built-in functions um, that you can use to manipulate the data, to cast things and what have you, and you can stack them up. So you can have a whole bunch of them, and this is what they look like. This particular uh, thing is just um, basically Debezium, which is a CDC tool, it's, it's unwrapping the message, just getting like the, the state afterwards because it's a lot cleaner. And then um, I'm, I'm pulling out the uh, ID and sticking it in a key. But anyway, loads of things. You can write your own, which might be handy. But you have to be a bit careful not to do stateless things. So don't be tempted to integrate with an API or do anything external. It's lightweight, stateless things. You're doing it. Um, and I'll show you where, where you're doing it. You're doing it, that SMT right here. So I'm getting data from somewhere, light, light transformation, and then sending it to Kafka. And then same thing, taking data out of Kafka, little light transformation, send it to the O4J. OK. So. I'm hoping that somebody in this room uh, is thinking, oh, I want that. Let's, what do I do now? Well, thanks for asking. So we have, you can do this in Docker. Um, so you can create a Docker file. And, but remember, there's that massive ecosystem of connectors. You, um, 
just put the ones that you want. So you'll create a Docker file like this, and you'll, you'll um, get the names of the connectors that are unique to you, your business, and you'll put them all in a Docker file. You'll build the Docker file, and then uh, you'll push it to like whatever Docker repository you're using. And then if you want to, um, there's like there's a, a longer Docker run command. It's kind of obnoxiously long. I didn't want to put it on the slide, but if you go to this link, uh, you'll see you know, step by step how to stand this up. And it's not very hard. Yeah. So I want to show an example, a practical example now. So um, I just, I was thinking like, oh, let's just create some chains of things, event chains. When I think about graph, it's all about chains, right? I'm to, and and, a, and a, a typical example of this, I might have um, something like churn. I want to predict, predict a churn event. So if I make a chain of all of the things that happen to a person, and then maybe you, you, they have like some kind of thing that happens to them. They interact with the, the grumpy customer service person. Maybe that can be surfaced by looking, look, oh, look, everyone who talks to Mr. Grumpy over there ends up like canceling their subscription, those sorts of things. Graph, it, graph is good at that. So I'm going to show you a practical example. We're going to create a uh, contact in Salesforce. And let's say we have some homegrown like, email marketing thing. We can mash all of those things uh, together and start to build out these chains. And this pattern, I think it's important. I think building chains is something that just like, comes up over and over and over, those linked lists. And uh, I think like, whatever your business is, it's, it's going to be different, but that pattern is going to hold, and I think it's, thank you. Yeah. So um, here's what we're going to do. We have a person, uh, and this linked list, in the very first instance, we have just one event, like uh, this, I already created this event, so um, this person signed up for uh, like an email uh, newsletter or something like that. And then um, the next, this is like, nah, your emails suck. Uh, so take that away. Um, but this is an event. So um, what we're going to do, th these are the steps. We start off with the first and the last being the head, the head and the tail, the same. Then we're going to create a new last relationship. Then we're going to sever the old last relationship. And then we're going to create a next. And next, 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 like Graph is so good at um, traversals along chains. That's um, something that's like not intuitive if you come from a relational database. And uh, so here's how to build chains. So I want to show you, well, I think I'll, I'll show you it working. And then, uh, then I'll show you the cipher uh, to do it. Uh, so, so let's uh, log in. It's probably logged me out. Let's see. So I'm going to go into Salesforce. So here, so just for reference, this is what we're doing. We're going into this bit here, Salesforce CRM, and we're going to create a contact. A new contact. What should we call him? Uh, Boaty Boatface, is that? <laughs> Boaty. 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 Uh, Muck. Boat face. And let's say it's boat at boat.com. OK. So we created a contact in Salesforce. Oh, man, I should have shown you the graph beforehand. Maybe there's, I think, it, I think I'm too late. And I think I'm also disconnected from my VPN. I don't know. Let's try this one more time. This was working like, I, just before you came, I, I just, uh, yeah. Come on. OK. Go back to browser. Thank you. All right. It's going to work. Don't worry. You weren't worried. I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this will take just a moment to update those labels. Uh, Match N, return N. Let's see. Return N. Oops. N, not M. Anyway, this guy here. So this is our graph at the moment. So what have I got here? Like here's Boaty McBoatface. 
you can see that the, 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 sales, the CDC has picked it up, it's put it in Kafka, it's yanked out this data, a cipher statement has been written, it's written it to the graph and it all happened like it, as the event happened within a, like, I don't know, a few hundred milliseconds perhaps, something like that. So let's say this boaty, boat at boat.com. So okay, let's go off to our email marketing app now. So um, imagine there's a GUI here, something like that. So we're going to add, we're going to sign uh, boat at boat.com. And he signed up. Come on. Yes, he signed up. So now he subscribes. So that's in uh, MySQL right now. So let's see if it's in Neo4j. Refresh this guy. Oh, look. OK. His boat. Is that boat? Yeah, that's boat at boat.com. Now he's uh, signed up to the email. That's great. Yeah. So now let's say um, he doesn't want that email anymore. Uh, so let's say we'll add uh, an unsubscribe date. So let's say he was like one of our shortest subscribers ever. And uh, he's just, isn't. and let's see what happens now. So now we have. A first and a last and a next. Is that the right node? Let's see. A boat, yeah. So, what do we got here? We have a. Whoa. There's some networking issues, but I'm hoping you can see that this is an email subscribe event followed by an email unsubscribe event. So this is kind of like the what it looks like to integrate all the things uh, in real time and build out those chains, uh, which then you can use uh, for like churn detection and those uh, sorts of things. So uh, I want to show you the cipher for this. I think I want to give credit to a friend, actually, Mark. Mark Queensland. Hello, Hello lovely. <laughs> uh, Mark Queensland uh, gave me this uh, pattern, and I think it's something I just use all the time. So, so in this, like, obviously I changed the, the, the fiddly details, but the, this pattern. So, you know, find, find the contact, fi create the uh, unsubscribe event, and then add the last. Remember, it was like making the new last, and then check to see if there's a first. If not, create it, and then and then delete the old last and then add the, the next in. So there's like a few steps that it's just like if you just follow this pattern, it's, you, I'm sure you'll find a use for this. Can you show me when you uh, resubscribe it? Resubscribe. Because I subscribe and then I unsubscribe and now I want to subscribe again. I want to see the three nodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, see the three nodes. And okay. The <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. All right. Let's see if we can uh, resubscribe. So I'm going to try. I mean, I don't actually know what's going to happen. Like, this is not a real app. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I can't. Do it. All right. I'm going to have to write a little. It won't let me delete. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to create a new boat at boat.com. And is that all right? So we'll add a new record. Boat at boat.com, boat.com, and let's say, is, ah, oh, no, not that one. I just, ah, oh, it's going to create another unsubscribe now. Anyway, and I don't even know if, let's see, let's see, I, I created a, I created an unsubscribe. Will you take an unsubscribe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, and then I'm also, like logged out or something. Let's match uh, match n return capital N by accident. Okay. Oh, no connection. Yeah. So I think you might have to take my word that it's like. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. Let's see. So yeah, yeah. Look, here's an uns he un he miraculously unsubscribed twice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, here, look, first, uh, subscribe. Can you read that? Like, that's just, yeah. That's, so what we're looking for is here. What are you doing? Yeah. So first, he subscribed. Then he unsubscribed. And then he unsubscribed again. 
He really means it this time. <laughs> yeah. The last is moved, yeah, there's always a new last. Yeah, that's the magic of the uh, appending to the linked list and adding the next and what have you. And so I, I use this personally, I use this for recommenders. Um, so customer journey, what do people do next uh, after something? So I, I have like a, a blog that, that I think most of the traffic on my blog is me. Um, but I'll show you. So I have uh, pages in my, let me show you what the graph looks like just so you can see it real quick. So if I go to Snowplow in here, and we'll just look at a few nodes. And I have the same data um, a couple of different ways, which I think is a really neat thing. Remember we talked about, oh, we, topic reuse. I put something in Kafka and then I can use it all sorts of different ways. I've got two different connectors writing the same data in different patterns for different uh, uses here. So let's take a look at this. I got, um, all right, these are pages. This, per this is a person, green person. Person views some page. That page is also viewed by some other person. And if I have to, uh, to guess, it's probably me, this guy here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's people who like this also like that. That's a legit thing to do with a graph a recommender. And, and actually, on the bottom of my webpage, you'll see like a little section that says recommended for you. And it's based on this. People who like this also like that. But then I was thinking that really there's a natural progression um, when people do something and, and what people do next uh, is also uh, a useful recommendation. I was watching, uh, like, um, uh, I binge watched Godfather and the recommender said you should watch Godfather 2 after I'd finished the whole series and I thought well that's kind of stupid. The reason for that is they're not doing this. They don't have a chain. So what I can do is I, I, I expose this as a like a rest uh, endpoint and I'll just maybe this this query is a little bit interesting I think. I can give it a URL say anchor on this node, find me all the nodes um, that have this URL. So I have a page view here, page view object, and they're all part of some next, next, next chain. Give me, give me, that, give me that page, and then go on to the next page. One, one hop down, and then do a little aggregation, and say, all right, what do people usually do after uh, doing that? Uh, and then that rest point, I'll show you what the call looks like. So. Um, not many people, look at that, four, four people after going to this page, Snowplow Events in Confluent Cloud, went on to look at the recommender, and one of them was more like, oh, I want to do Prometheus, and then one of them just clicked on the link on the bottom. But uh, this is uh, kind of uh, an easy thing to take advantage of those next um, relationships and then expose them to the business. Just wrap them in a endpoint and you know enjoy. Yeah. And this recommendation is made in real time. Yes, yes. Yeah, so when you click, I mean it's kind of a long story, but when you click, there's a cookie gets dropped. That cookie is associated with all of your pages, and then those pages, uh, it's it's using the people who like this also like that. I'll, sh I'll show you just because it's so like between so the CDC for the systems plus the quick stream events. And then the recommendation back that's happening in the blink of an eye. It's not. I mean, it's not like it's near real time. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. it preserve in all states? I'm sorry. Does it preserve in all states in a graph? Preserving all states. I've been very picky about. Actually, I don't think you were here. I want to leave you with this one slide because I think it's like. Uh, I think your question like reminds me a little bit of of this. Uh, so. So I think what I did uh, when I, I decided on the, the data that I was going to put in the graph, I, I was very deliberate. Like, I only need these three things. And uh, so, so that's, I was trying, to, I, I always try and uh, like never put anything in the graph unless I have like a specific reason uh, for it. So yeah. Oh yeah, 
I can, you mean you can see like uh, what's next? What's yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. You know, ah, oh, that's such a good idea. So I think uh, in my in my next life, I yeah. See if they bounce. Like that's that's the next thing. Like they, uh, they go to that page, but then they thought, oh, that was that wasn't very good. And then, and then they leave. And if you capture those metrics and put them in there, that's important. You're right. Yeah. I didn't capture that. Yeah. I'll do that next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that is. Am I? How am I doing for time? Am I doing all right? Yeah, I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. It says zero. Anyway, thanks so much. If you have questions, uh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah.